Pal World is mainly about the pals, but it's been called Pokemon with Guns for a reason. So I'm going to walk you through my thoughts on all the weapons of Pal World right here. All right, so unlocked to level one here, you've got three technical weapons, the Stone Axe, Stone Pickaxe, and the Club. The Stone Axe and Stone Pickaxe, you're, you're not really meant to hit things with those. If you need to use an axe to bonk a land ball in the head, go for it. But now those those are Nerf football. Just don't even bother. That's like throwing a Nerf ball at someone. It, it's going to bounce off and make a squeaky noise. Just don't bother. Now the club, it does 25 damage instead of the 20 of the Stone Axe and Pickaxe. But it still only does 25. The second you can get something better, just move to that. I'm going to leave it at trash because... It's the level one weapon. You need something to bonk land balls with, and I guess this is it for a little bit. And I'm gonna talk about it because technically the game classifies as a weapon, but the handheld torch technically does damage if you hit something with it. It does 10, only 10. It just, just don't. That's bonk, squeaky noise, don't even bother. Actually, you know what? No, that's worse than Nerf football. Add rows below here, give me a second. This, this is now, there we go, torch. It gets its own row because that is so bad. Just, just don't, just don't. Alright, now our first real weapon on the list that's actually worth using for more than like three lamb balls. The old bow. Very nice, actually. And a caveat for my list here, I'm going to be ranking these weapons on when they're built in the game, considering your tech level, and what they're meant to be used on. Like, if you're using the old bow on a German tide at the end of the game, no, it's going to suck. It's going to really suck. But when you build it at its intended time, like kind of in the starting area, just taking out pen gullets and stuff, it's actually quite nice. Like, this is the first weapon you get that can really do some damage. I really suggest using this for a while. I personally did, and I kind of skipped some of the other things out here, not gonna lie. Next up on our list, we've got the Stone Spear, which you can build at level 4. It does 35 damage, so noticeably less than the old bow, but to be fair, it doesn't use ammo or anything. You do gotta get in close, but for the weak early pals, that's not too big a deal. Some of them might start hurting you a little bit, and melee gets very dangerous late game, but I'm gonna put this at eh, honestly. It's not markedly better than the club, but it is better, so that's that's an eh for me. Even where it's meant to be built in the game, it doesn't do that much. Up next on our list, we've got the Flame Bow, which, well, it's very nice because of the flame, that also has its downsides. You can build this level 5, does 65 damage just like the old bow, but with bonus fire damage, lights things on fire, very nice. But the downside of that is it means it takes flame organs just to make the arrows. And when you whiff your shots horribly, like your buddy at the bar trying to hit on someone, and you're sitting there like, wow, I've got no arrows left, I need to go make more flame arrows. Oh no, I'm out of flame organs. I need to go find a fox parts to split in half long ways. Okay, well, time to go run around just to make arrows. It's it's a pain. It's just a pain. I'm gonna leave it at eh, because while well, it is nice, and the fire damage is nice early game, building those arrows is a pain. So just eh, it's eh. It's out of the, park. the bat here. If you're trying to hit a home run with a jolt hog out in the park, this is what you want. It's not great, but it does 50 damage, build at level 7, and only takes wooden stone to build. That's 15 more damage than the stone spear, and it's still a very early game there. Honestly, I would put this at pretty good. It's a nice melee weapon. Coming up next, we've got the poison bow, which, while it looks very cool, and does poison damage, is very nice. Exact same issue as the fire bow, it takes poison organs to make, which, honestly, are even harder to get than the flame organs, because you need to find some of the daydreams or something at night. I don't know. It's kind of a pain to make, but hey, does good damage, does poison damage. We'll leave it in an A as well. The Tri-Shot Crossbow. I'm a big fan of this thing here. It's built at only level 10, so still pretty early game, and it uses one arrow to make three shots. Now, the shots individually do 40 damage, but technically, if you land all three of them, that's 120. And that's a mathematical fact. I know a mathematicals or two because I'm a mathematologist. So I tell you what, from the mathemology we're doing here, I want to put this at quite nice. Well, we've rolled across another set of axes and pickaxes. There, there's not much to say. Just put them in Nerf football. If you're using an axe or pickaxe to hit anything after level one, what are you doing? You're losing your mind. I mean, technically, if all your other weapons break, it's better than your fists. They do 30 damage, which is worse than the stone spear. So just bonk, squeaky noise. Don't even bother. Coming in next at level 13. And honestly, I don't know why it's level 13 when you can build the metal axe and pickaxe at level 11. Do you just kind of look at the ingot sitting on the table and go, man, I couldn't possibly turn that into a spear until I have more knowledge. I have no idea how I made this pickaxe. It's sharp too. I okay, not to the point. But this does 80 damage. It's fairly cheap to make, takes some ingots, but where it's meant to be built in the game, this thing kind of smokes things. Like you get in close, you start poking away, you're going to be taking things down, no problem. So honestly, this is a quite nice for me. Like where you build this in the game, ooh, it starts tearing pals apart. Also able to be built at level 13, 
the crossbow, which, man, this thing's a sniper. 280 damage? That's insane. You can start, like, one-shotting some of the early stuff. You can take out things no problem with this guy. Honestly, I don't think I need to say much. It's a little expensive to build, but that's insane damage. I'm putting that as our first spicy. That's awesome early game. And each following couple levels after that crossbow there, you've got the fire and poison crossbow, which I'm upset that the poison crossbow does not have a picture that's all purple and fancy like the poison bow. Come on, game. You couldn't just put some purple around this guy. I had to put a P on the label. Okay, but not to the point. Um, poison crossbow, still really good. Does 280 damage as well. Dual extra poison damage. Honestly, for a pain in the making the ammo, I'm just going to leave it. It's quite nice. And fire crossbow, same deal. But at least it looks pretty. Next up, we've got one I am incredibly excited to talk about here. It's the first firearm in the game. It, this was Pokemon with guns. That's what it looks like. It's Pokemon with guns. And here's the first gun you can build. Look at it. It's a musket. That's awesome. And I tell you what, when I'm running around the fields of Pal World and I'm lining up on a Jolt Hog from a mile away and I just snipe it out in one hit, it feels amazing. It just feels amazing. This thing does tons of damage to bosses. The ammo is a little bit of a pain to make because you actually have to start making gunpowder, but hey, get used to it. All the later weapons in the game need gunpowder. So honestly, spicy, absolutely spicy. Thousand damage, that's insane. All right, coming up next, we've got the stun baton, which does 10 damage. So the damage sucks. You're not killing anything with this, but that's not the point of it. The point of it is to stun things so they're easier to catch because you get a bonus for catching when you stun stuff. So honestly, I'm going to give it an eh. I never really ended up using it much. It was a fun gimmick to be like, wow, that thing's a little easier to catch now. Maybe I can let my pals do a little more damage if I stun it, but I really never bothered using it, so that's an eh. Th this, the makeshift pistol. It made me upset, all right? I gotta say it, it made me upset. I was like, oh, cool, you get your first pistol. Like, that's probably way better than the musket. It'll shoot faster. It sucks. It just sucks. It does way less damage. The ammo's even more of a pain to make than the course ammo for the musket. And it doesn't do much. Like, this thing is even worth building. Honestly, that, that's a nerf football for me. Like, where you build this in the game, just stick with the musket. Honestly, stick with the crossbow. They do the same amount of damage. It's like 280. So just squeaky noise. Don't bother. Just don't. All right, I'm less angry about the normal pistol. I'll settle down a little here. So the normal pistol does 250 damage. It's got some magazine of eight, which is pretty good. So it holds a lot more damage in there. And you can shoot pretty quick. So that's nice. You can output some damage quick. And it reloads reasonably fast burns through a lot of ammo so that's kind of a pain like it's expensive to keep this thing running i'm gonna put it at a pretty good it's fun to use it's fun to run around and just glock things but expensive to use that's the big thing for me it's just I, I hated running around and just keeping making ammo and ah but it's pretty good all right something i didn't expect in the game for some reason i don't really know why the frag grenades you throw grenades at things just throw grenades at a penguin or something uh, pal world hey uh, does 750 damage, so that's some good damage. It's a little bit of a pain to build, but it's fun. You can just chuck grenades at things. Does some nice splash damage, that's cool. So honestly, it's pretty good for me. And right along with it, the shock grenade. Now the shock grenade here, it does 750 damage, but it applies that shocked effect like the stun baton to make things easier to catch. And that means it's ranged. So honestly, that pushes it up to a quite nice for me, because you can get that range bonus, do a bunch of damage to something, and just catch stuff easier. I like that, that's quite nice. All right, moving on to refined metal gear here, we've got the refined metal spear, which does some good damage, just 310 damage, which is more than the pistol per shot. So very nice damage. You can stamp real quick hits, you can output a lot of damage. Big problem with it though. You make it level 34, what's going around at level 34? Some stronger pals. And what happens to stronger pals, they do more damage to you. So if you're real close into stuff, you're more likely to get wiped out by them. So I'm not a huge fan of melee weapons late game. The weapon itself is good in theory. But getting closer stuff, bad. So that kind of leads me to put somewhere in this range, and we're just going to go right in the middle. It's an eh. It does good damage. It's nice for wiping out a little bit lower level pals if you need to go get some uh, items or experience or something, but fighting stuff that's actually your level or above? Yeah. All right, moving on to refined metal. We've got, again, for some reason, totally different level than the spear. I guess you can learn to work with the refined metal ingot and just not make a pickaxe. That's something, but... The, the pickaxe and axe, they're still trash. Just don't. They do like 40 damage, even for the refined metal. Don't be hitting stuff with these. Do build them, because the mining's great. But for a weapon, they suck. Nerf football, squeaky noise, don't do it. Yada yada, we got this now. It's a pickaxe and axe. Okay, so the single shot rifle here. It does 1100 damage, which is only 100 more than the musket at 1000. But there's one thing that doesn't take into consideration. The reload rate. The reload rate on this is, I don't know exactly what, it's not listed anywhere specifically, but it feels like about double. So you can output about double the damage of the musket, and 
The ammo's a little more expensive because it's rifle ammo, not course ammo. It's a little more expensive to make this, so a little tougher to build, but you can output twice as much damage, so that's, ooh, a huge plus. I don't think I'm going to put it all the way up at spicy because at the level you can build this, there's some other good weapons around. I think we're going to leave it at quite nice here, but it's well worth building, and it is, in fact, quite nice. Oh, and actually, too, because I realize I haven't mentioned this yet, um, while we're talking about the rifle here, aim for headshots. That's just a PSA. In this game, you get bonuses for headshot damage on pals, enemies, whatever. So the single shot rifle here does insane damage if you're hitting the weak points on pals and enemies. So headshots, go for it. So we've got here the ice grenade, which, much like the normal grenade, does 750 damage, so nice damage, but it freezes enemies. So that's real handy. Much like the shock grenade, it'll help you catch pals, and freezing will fully freeze them in place. It doesn't last all that long, so eh. It's kind of late game to build, too. I think I'm going to leave it at pretty good, honestly. Haven't found myself using it too much, to be honest. All right, first shotgun in the game, the double barrel shotgun. It looks kind of weak off the bat. It's only got 190 damage, but I tell you what, that's a little misleading because that is damage per pellet. As near as I can tell from doing a little testing, it looks like there's nine pellets in here. Maybe just every time one or two miss, there's actually more. But that's a lot of damage. That's a number that I can't calculate my head right now off the bat, so I'm going to put it on the screen right here. But this would be a spicy for me because that's a ton of damage output, but it only holds two shells, and there's literally a better shotgun in only a few levels. So I'm going to leave it at a quite nice, but it is indeed quite nice. All right, we've got an interesting one here. Lily's Spear, of course, related to Lily, the boss that you fight in one of the towers. Makes sense. But it does 450 damage. So that's kind of insane damage output there. Much better than just the refined metal spear. But expensive to build with the 20 ancient civilization parts it takes. And as a weapon, it's eh. But I saw a video online recently where you can actually use this to mine super fast. Like you stand on top of the rock, crouch, and just start attacking. You can like destroy your rock in five seconds. But this is a weapons tier list. That's just a random tip. I'm going to put it at a pretty good because that's far more damage than the refined metal spear. But man, is it expensive to build. So it's not any higher than that. Molotov! It's an incendiary grenade. So, yeah, it's cool. It does fire damage to stuff. You throw it, it spreads a bunch of fire everywhere. I, that's awesome. It does 750 damage like the normal grenade and just throws fire everywhere. Great if you're fighting some grass pals. I can't say I've used it too much, so I can't put it up too high, but I'm gonna call it pretty good. I like it. It's fun. It's a Molotov. Alright, I alluded to this one before during the double barrel shotgun. The pump action shotgun. Just the superior shotgun. Holds eight shots, does 220 damage per pellet. We already know there's a bunch of pellets in there, so it's outputting damage like crazy. I, I don't think I need to say more. Spicy. It's spicy. It's the best shotgun of the game. Use it. Please. All right, I've kind of made my thoughts on melee weapons known at this point. I don't like getting close in late game, and this is the latest game weapon, but man, does the sword do damage. 525 damage, and I don't know. Something's just fun about running around, swinging a sword around, and just chopping pals in half. It's, it's great. It's just great. I would put it at spicy, but the only thing that's keeping it from being up there is just that you get close in melee and you're more likely to die. So I'm going to leave that quite nice. It's the best melee weapon in the game. That's a quite nice. The best of the best. The creme de la creme. Which I don't really know what that means, but people yell it at me from the streets all the time. So you know what? The assault rifle here. We got to talk about it. 20 ammo. 320 damage. That's insane. It's expensive to build. The ammo is expensive to build. Who cares? You got to do something with all that stuff eventually. Got to get to the high level, but... This is the best gun. It's the best gun in the game. Spicy. Need I say more? There's nowhere else I can put it. All right, speaking of the best thing in the game, the highest damage output by far, the rocket launcher here. I wasn't quite sure how much exactly it did. I looked up, apparently it does 10,000 damage a shot, which we were just talking about this side of being 320. I'm like, that's great. 10,000? Oh my God, of course, you shoot a whole rocket at something. So very expensive, but... 10,000! Yeah, that's a spicy. That's insane! Alright, and just to round things out here, because I kind of didn't know this was a weapon until I was looking at this list. The Elizabeth Staff. Apparently you can buy it or something. Um, does like 100 damage. It's it's trash. Just don't worry about it. It looks really cool, so that's nice, but it's trash. Alright, that's it. That's my list. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you agreed or disagreed, love to let me know down in the comments. Let me know your S-tier weapons. Let me know your F-tier weapons. Just let me know anything. Let me know what you have for lunch today. Just, I need to know things. I need knowledge, all right? But thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, let us your like down below. And if you're looking to see more content like this, love you considering that subscribe button. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.